Good morning and praise the Lord. Welcome to this house where lives are changed. This is like a hospital. Whenever you come to this place, you never live the same. It all depends with your attitude. So my prayer this morning is that have a receiving attitude and a receiving mode because the Lord is already here and he knows you with your needs and your wants. My name is Beatrice Waithaka. I'm born again this morning. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I'm a daughter in this house. And I want to take this opportunity to thank our bishop in absentia and Pastor Alice for giving us this opportunity that we can grow ourselves as we grow the people of God. There's no way you can be used to this place. This is where lives are changed and this is where destinies are changed. I want to welcome all of you who are in this place this morning and those that are watching us online and I believe we'll be blessed together. We want to see the word of God this morning because I know we came expecting. Some of us have been here, have not been here since last Sunday. It takes seven days for you to be in this place. I know God is here. There are those who are here on Monday for the hour of prayer. There are those who are here on Wednesday for times of refreshing. And even you who came today as a visitor or our member, you are most welcome. And this morning, I want to share from the word of God, the uncompromising life. The uncompromising life. Times that you are living, we compromise everything. But you see from the Bible, people that never compromised, and these people, they pleased our Lord. Because you are born in the image and the likeness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And since he was in this world, he never compromised. And wants you to come after him and never compromise. Whatever you go through, because life is full of turmoils. There are ups and downs in life. But the Lord has an expectation that you don't compromise. That you can stand up and say, this one I cannot take because of my faith. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Since you have the word of God, that was the end of compromise. You used to compromise before, but since you came to the kingdom, you drew a line that from today, henceforth, I will not compromise because of what I know. In the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse number 8. Daniel 1, 8. But, but comes from another sentence. Don't, we know what happened there, but let's consider on verse number eight because of time. But Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. He asked the chief of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. Daniel, purpose in his heart not to defile himself. And he went ahead and asked permission from the chief of staff to allow him not to eat the food and drink the wine from the king's table. Nobody illustrates that life better than Daniel. Daniel was in Babylon. And Babylon was a pagan society in every sense. Talk of every sense. Babylon was a pagan society. No regard for the true God as evidenced by the fact that they had attacked the land of Israel. These are the Babylonians. They had attacked the land of Israel, disrespected the true God, and taken all, taken all the cap people captive who weren't killed. Two things happen. You are either taken captive or killed. But this time, David, Daniel was not killed. He was taken captive with other young men. While all this was happening, Daniel's soul was anchored on the rock. Friends, if you are going to survive this time, in salvation, your soul must be anchored on the rock. Not the rock of this house, but the rock Jesus Christ. Because this house can be destroyed, but the rock Jesus Christ can never be destroyed. When Daniel was taken captive, he was around 14 or 15 years of age. A young man under tremendous pressure, separated from his home and separated from his family and separated, frankly, 
from all personal accountability. And I want to thank God this morning because I know in this house this morning and those watching online, you are maybe you are 14 or 15 years. In our system in Kenya, 14 years and 15, you are now entering from one. And that is the time Daniel was taken captive. And that is the age we are looking for identity. Am I born again or am I not born again? But Daniel made a resolution that he not defile himself with the king's food and the wine. Think about it, those who are 14 years and 15 years. You'll be taken to the state house because that is the state house of our, of our nation or the White House in America and given all the privileges, would you stand your ground? There was nobody in Babylon to watch over Daniel. Remember, he was separated from his family, from his peers, though they school together, from his society, he was separated from them. But Daniel, in this foreign land, made a resolution that it is me and my God. There was nobody, at least from his past, from his home, homestead, he could have lived any kind of life he wanted. But he remembered one thing, that I am a chosen generation. Daniel rejected the lifestyle influence. If there's anything that is pulling us Christians away from salvation and away from our faith, it is lifestyle. You want to dress this way. My dress, my, my church, that is an influence. You want to eat anything and everything, and yet you are born again. Daniel made a resolution that I will not defile myself with the king's food and the wine. A lifestyle of any society is the most corrupting thing. A lifestyle. Daniel had the privilege of living in the palace. Nobody knew where he came from. Maybe he came from ghetto. Maybe he came from a very well family. But Daniel, this time, he had a new place. He lived in the palace. He had the best education. Like those who are joining Form 1. He had the best education system and the best diet. But one thing, David Daniel knew that I am here as an ambassador from my nation, Israel. Daniel knew the idols don't eat. And he knew this, that when the, key, the foods of the king were prepared, they were first of all taken to the idols. They were done some rituals and then brought back to the king that they can be served. Daniel knew all this. And he knew, I cannot partake the same food that was, 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 was given to the idols or was given, done some rituals by the idols. By, by, by the idols. Daniel, as a young man, would not compromise on the lifestyle side. It doesn't matter what people said. Daniel put his foot down. That me, I know who I am. And I know where I came from. And I know why I'm here. Because I was taken captive. And I want to be an ambassador and a redeemer of my people, Israel. When this season is over. So he sought permission from the commander of the officials that he might not defile himself. He sought permission that he should not do what defile himself. Friends, a heart that loves the Lord trusts the Lord and therefore obeys the Lord and has no difficulty of making the right choices and trusting God to take care of the consequences. Trust God. Obey God. And God will take care of your consequences. It has been said that faith is not believing in spite of evidence. That's superstitious. But obey in spite of consequences. It doesn't matter what will be done to you. It doesn't matter what they are planning. But you believe in spite of their consequences. And this morning... By the grace of God, we want to learn five lessons we can learn from the life of Daniel. Because Daniel was just a man like you and me. Daniel was born again like you and me, but he had boundaries. And this is what made Daniel to stand out among other young men. Number one, Daniel had an ashamed boldness. An ashamed boldness. There was a man by the name of Ashpenaz assigned to take care of these young men because the king of Babylon thought of 
having his own team of young people for his own security. And Daniel and the other f the three young men fr the, the, from, from Israel were among these young people. So here there was a man who was assigned to take care of these young men because the king had an interest of the young people. This was a very important project for the king. Imagine a, a president in Kenya giving you a project that get me young men from this age henceforth and train for me an army. That was a very big project. So Ash, Ashpenaz was given this assignment. They were going to have three years of very important and intense education. When Daniel goes to Ashpenaz, he said, look, we can't eat this food. This was Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. He became the voice of the, because he knew where they came from. These three young men cannot defend themselves. So he became a voice of a three young, a, a, a young men and said, we cannot eat this food because we cannot defile ourselves. Do you have somebody in your life, a confidant, who can give you a testimony that I and my sister Jane, I and my brother Mike, we cannot eat this food because we cannot defile ourselves. Do you live your own life? Or you live the life of others. He displays a tremendous amount of boldness facing Ashpenaz and telling him, I and my three brothers, we cannot eat this food because we cannot defile ourselves. Daniel did not sugarcoat the situation. And this is what we do. We say, I don't like this food because I have chronic ulcers since I was 11 years. Was he speaking the truth? No, he was cheating so that he can have a way. Oh, haven't I been feeling unwell so I cannot take this food? I have a problem and so on and so forth. But he said, point blank, I can't eat the king's food, period. And I can't drink the king's wine. Because it will defile me. Why can't you fast? Why can't you pray? You have many reasons. But Daniel said, I cannot eat the king's food. I cannot drink the king's wine. Because it is going to defile me. Because he knew his relationship with his heavenly father. Daniel was not ashamed of his God. His faith in his God and his obedience in his God. He knew his God. And he knew what pleases the heart of his God. And he knew what makes his heart, the heart of, the, of his God angry. So he said, I cannot defile myself. Because I cannot do against the wish of my father. In the book of Psalms 119 and verse number 46. David said, I will speak to kings about your laws. As this is what happened to Daniel. He spoke to Ashpenad concerning the laws of his God. And I will not be ashamed. Are we ashamed of the gospel? Can you declare our stand that I cannot do this because of my relationship with my father? This is what the law of my God says. And I cannot go against it. Whom should you please? Is it your king or your God? Daniel had that kind of character that stands fearlessly and boldly before kings, before rulers, before pagans, and speaks the truth. He was not ashamed of his, of his salvation. He was not ashamed of the relationship they had with his father. And he said, I cannot do this because this is against the wish of my father. Number two. Daniel had an uncommon standard. Uncommon standard. Uncompromising people like Daniel go past the crowd. They go past the minimum. The minimum is we take food. But Daniel went beyond the minimum. He went to the maximum and said, I cannot defile myself. I cannot think of the food in state house. That's the best food. But Daniel knew this is just for some time. But what is ahead of me is for eternity. 
They set standards for themselves that exceed the norm. Live at the highest levels. Stand above the crowd. They don't choose the good, but they choose the best. This morning, what have you chosen? Have you chosen the good or the best? Safari com is the better option, but Jesus is the only option. Choose the best. They choose to live at a level of commitment, a level of commitment that is beyond the rest. To have a more faithful prayer life than the rest and a deeper study of God's word than the rest. What will make us to mount up these year, friends? It is the study of God's word and faithful prayer life. The time from telling people, pray for me, it is over. Pray for yourself. Study the word of God by yourself because the word is open. And the same spirit that gives us revelation is going to give you the same revelation. Study the word of God and have a faithful prayer life. This is what made Daniel to stand out among many. When they had to choose between God's word and the king's food, they chose the word of God. Given a choice, friends, what can you choose? Given a choice that I lay before you today, life and death, life and death. But the Lord says, choose life that you may live. Given a choice, what can we choose? The life that you are living now, just look back and see the choices that you made. Yes, you are crying because of the harvest. Don't blame the harvest. Look at the seeds that you planted. Because the seeds brings forth what you planted. In Psalms 119 verse 103, the Bible says, how sweet are your words to taste to me. They are sweeter than honey. We all know that honey is sweet. There's nothing else that, that is sweet like a honey. But David said, how sweet are your words? How sweet your words taste to me. They are sweeter than honey. There's something else sweeter than the honey you know. There's something else sweeter than the sugar that you know. And they, these are the words of God. Number three. Daniel had an earthly protection. He had an earthly protection. In verse number nine says, Daniel 1 verse 9. Now, God had given the chief of staff both respect and affection for Daniel. Here, the Lord comes in. You know, Daniel was the one who made the decision. He's the one who made the resolution. But in verse number 9, the Lord comes in. And he gave the chief of staff both respect towards Daniel and also affection. Friends, declare your stand. And the Lord will come into the picture. The Lord is looking upon you. What you decide is going to stamp your decision. Daniel made a resolution. And the Lord came in in verse number 9. And he gave him respect. Both There are two things. Respect and affection. God granted Daniel favor and compassion in the inside of the commander of the officials. Nobody could see what is happening. But inside the army of the officials, God commanded love, favor, and compassion. We would rather take the uncompromising stand, have the whole society against us, but God be on our side. It doesn't matter how many people are against you. If only God can be for you, you are more than a conqueror. But for us, we want to please people. We want to be on the winning side. That's why we compromise. Daniel made a resolution and God became his companion. It is not that your integrity becomes a valued premium. Mm -mm. And they are going to be nice to you because you have integrity. But remember this, the issue of your obedience to God to take you to the highest ground and that pleases God and God will grant you, grant you favor. People may look at you and you look because you have integrity. But what about your heart? The Lord searches the heart. Daniel's life portrays what God will do for the people or the, for the person who is faithful. When you are faithful, 
God will be a companion. God, it will be his joy to walk with you. Na hata ona aibu to be called your God. No. Number four. Daniel had unhindered, unhindered persistence. Unhindered persistence. Verse number 11 and 12. The Bible says, Daniel spoke with the attendant who had been appointed by the chief of staff to look after Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Nazariah. Verse 12. Please test us for 10 days on a diet of vegetables and water, Daniel said. Test us after 10 days. If you give up the first time, you don't have Daniel's character. The price at whatever point you compromise, the price is at the price is at whatever point you compromise your convictions. That is where the price is. When you compromise your convictions. Daniel had no price. So there was never any end to his persistence. What is it from the beginning? He stood his ground. That I will not defile myself. And this pleased the Lord until God gave him favor. Wherever he went, Daniel had favor because of decision. Number five. Unblemished faith. Unblemished faith. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians 5.27, That the Lord is preparing church without blemish. And for us to have a church without blemish, we must have faith without blemish. Because the church is built by faith. So Daniel made a resolution that he wanted to stand on unblemished faith. That nobody could question his faith. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.20 that, that he might he might present himself a glorious church. He did this to present come again media. Jesus did this that he might present her. Her is a church. To him a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that she should be holy and without blemish. Friends the Lord is coming back for the church. A church without wrinkle. A church without a spot. A church without blemish. And we are the church. He's looking forward for a church that he died for. The blood of Jesus paid it all. When that blood, just a dot of that blood comes upon you, it cleanses every spot, every blemish, and every wrinkle. And the Lord is saying, are you ready? Because I'm almost coming back for my church. Not everybody, but a church without wrinkle. A church without spot. church without blemish. How is your faith? Is your faith with wrinkles? Is your faith with spots? Is your faith without blemish? Daniel chapter 1 verse number 13. At the end of the 10 days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's food. Then, make your decision in light of what you see. What a confidence. That after 10 days, come and test us. And compare us with the other young men. I told you it was a team of young men. Compare us with the other young men and see if there is a difference. And you make your own decision. Whom do you think stood up better according to your decisions who make a, who, who stood up better daniel and the three young men because they knew the secret that for you to look better it's not about the king's food it's not about the king's wine it is about the favor of god upon your life daniel knew the secret that if i can abide in the laws of my father it will be well with me and it shall be well with my brothers There is something so wonderful about unblemished 
unblemished faith, which is a spiritual principle. Sin produces doubt. Friends, whenever you are in sin, believe you me, you are full of doubt. You don't have confidence because, you know, inside you, the inner man is accusing you. Therefore, sin produces fear. When you are in sin, you are so fearful. Nobody is chasing you, but you are so fearful because of sin. The sin that you have hidden in your heart. Sin produces questioning. Am I born again or am I not? Should I be married to this man as a second wife? Simply because he loves me? Should I compromise? Should I give in to the advances of my boss? Should I? Should I not? When you live in sin, there's a lot of questioning in your life. Should I take this bribe? No, it is not bribe. He said it's a thanksgiving. He was appreciating me. Should I take it? Should I leave it? Should I take this wine? No, it is church wine. It is not beer. It is not alcohol. It is church wine. Should I take it? When you live in sin, or they, when they sin in your heart, there is a lot of questioning. And only you who has the answer. You ask yourself the question, and you deliver the answer. Because it is you, and you are conscious. When you live in sin, they are so unsure. Am I sure? Is it the right way or the wrong way? Am I doing the right thing or not? Because you, there is sin in you. But friends, make a resolution like Daniel. Righteousness produces confidence and security. I know. And what I know, and I know. Nobody can change me from what I know. Daniel knew that he knew his God will deliver him. At that young age, 15 years and he knew that he knew his God from Sunday school. That he knew a God who answers prayers and who answers by fire. Daniel made a resolution that me, I will live for my God. No matter what is placed before me, but me, I have made a decision. If there had been sin in Daniel's life, he would, not, he would have never have confidently and boldly put himself in that position. Risking your life that you not eat the, food, the king's food. Just putting your life into a danger. But he knew this. It is not about food. It's about the relationship between me and my God. And he put his life into a risk and declared his position. David said in Psalm 66 verse number 18. Psalm, he said, if I had not confessed the sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Friends, do you want the Lord to listen to you? For him to be attentive to your prayer? Confess that sin. And it's only you who knows that sin. Because you know, no matter, no matter we say, Jesus is my personal savior. It is that personal. It's only you who knows what is in your heart. So here is a testimony of his holiness and his purity. Because he knew, if I confess the sin, the Lord will forgive me. And he's going to incline his ear unto me. You can operate in any, in any trial in total confidence when you know your heart is pure. That nobody can accuse you. They are looking for you this way, this way. There is nowhere they can put a hold on you because you know that your heart is pure. And you live in a holy life. Determine not to compromise and leave to God the results. Just Purpose, I will not compromise. And the, re the results, we will see the manifestation that this person loves the Lord. Because Daniel left a testimony in the land of Babylon. That he cannot defile himself in the king's palace, having the best education and the best place, knowing where he was coming from. And now he's here, being treated as a child of the king. But he knew one thing, I don't belong here. Mimi I don't belong here. In verse 21, Daniel remained in the royal service until the first year of the reign of King Cyrus. The first king passed on. Now he's there because he declared his turn. Knowing where he was coming from, Daniel declared his turn. An uncompromising life gives you unlimited influence. 
our influence is so small because leo uko kegeuge uke shoko geuge but when you declare i will not compromise the lord gives you influence that has no boundaries wherever you go favor announce your landing umefika because you don't compromise you are a woman and a man of integrity and you stand by your word you said no the first day you are told now it is the fifth day you see the killer you know you said yes the tenth day because you knew the moment you compromise the lord leaves and because you want this relationship please stand by your ground then 11:32 the bible says and such as we do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries this is what, what, what i was looking for but b but the people that do know their god shall be strong and do exploits daniel and the three boys they knew their god they stood their ground four of them and said us the four of us i daniel meshak Shadrach and Abednego we will not divide ourselves and out of those four the Lord raised a generation it doesn't matter how many you are you can just be alone and make a decision and the Lord can raise a Christian and a godly generation out of you because he knows what is in you you cannot compromise a bishop by the name of Latima and bishop Ridley these were bishops bishop Latima and bishop ridley they love the lord so so much you see they are bishops and one day they were told to deny the faith they have in jesus christ so standing before the stakes where they were to be burned to death these are the stakes they want to be burned to death but these people made a decision bishop latimer someone emphasized that men should serve the lord with a true heart and inward in fact affection and not just with outward show that was his slogan that people should serve god and love god with a true heart and inward affection and not just with outward show daniel could have shown the outward show but he made a decision from inside the inside affection Bishop Ridley said was a preacher beloved by his congregation whose very life portrayed the truths of the Christian doctrines he taught in his own household he had daily bible readings and encouraged scripture memory among his people these two servants of god were brought before their executioners and they were told to deny the lord jesus christ they refused and they were consumed in flames why because they made a decision not to defile themselves and not to do what to deny the faith they had in their lord jesus christ dr hong watched the japanese cut his father's thumbs off in north korea not long ago because his father would not deny jesus christ put yourself in that in that person's shoe he was watching his father his father's thumbs being cut off by the japanese because he could not deny jesus christ but he stood his ground all the thumbs were cut but he remained thumbless christian is there anything like that he lived a thumbless christian but he never denied jesus christ there was a group of scottish people who refused to recognize the king as the head of the church they said no the church belongs to the king but they said no the church belongs to jesus christ richard cameron a notable preacher one day had a knock at his door remember this is one of them one of those who said they cannot recognize the king as the head of church so he had a knock at his door when he opened the door there was a messenger with a box and this messenger gave him open the box for him to see what is inside what was inside was the head of his hand the head and two of his hands in that box this is what richard said the lord you gave and the lord you have taken may your name be glorified think about it 
somebody knocking at your door. I bring you a box. We think of goodies. And this person was so eager to know what is in this box. And he opened the box. He saw the head of his, hand, of his son and two hands of his son. He didn't complain because he, he could not deny what he knew. He could not blaspheme what he knew. He said, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken. May may be glorified. There are those who have paid in mass prices to stand their ground and not compromise no matter the cost. We got born again, friends. We don't know when Jesus is coming back. He said he's coming back. Every day he's coming back. Should you compromise and he comes back? What a waste. Years that you have lived in salvation. That one day or one minute you compromise because of the king's food and the king's wine. Because of those goodies. Because of that promotion. Because of that contract. You compromise. Judas lived with Jesus. He saw what Jesus did in all his three years in ministry. One day, Judas compromised. You see how he ended? The money that he got, those 30 pieces of shekels, he never even enjoyed them. He went and bought, and bought a land. And in that land, he went and hanged himself. He was buried in that land. Friends, What can, you com- what can you compare with the love that Jesus loves us with? He gave his life for us. He, never co- he, he had every ability to compromise, but he never compromised. He said, Father, forgive them. For do not know what they are doing. We have compromised salvation. That nowadays, even then somebody that you are born again, you feel even shy to say that you are born again. Especially as the pastors. To say that you are a pastor, it has no weight. Because of what other people are doing. I want to stand the ground today that if Daniel made it, I will make it. It doesn't matter how many we were or how many will be. But if Daniel made it, we'll also make it. Because the one who called us, he's not ready to leave us. He called us to the end. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. That he'll be with us to the end of age. It's only us who can leave him. But he cannot leave us. But my question is, are you ready to pay for the price? Are you ready to pay for the cost? Are you ready? Because Daniel was ready. He said he's ready. Because you cannot live alone. It was Daniel and the other three young men. Friends, this life you cannot live alone. And Daniel made a decision that I and my three friends will not defile ourselves. You have left the group that was encouraging you. You have left people that were giving you morale. Let us continue in this journey of faith. You cannot live alone. Because alone is a very small number. But my prayer this morning is that decide not to defile yourself. We will see the results. We will see the manifestation. Because God is coming to work in you for his own glory. Father, we thank you. And I bless you this morning. We know that you are human and you are flesh. And for this you gave us your Holy Spirit to work in us and through us. This morning, Abba Father, we surrender to you. Did you come and have your way to your Father? It it is only your way that can take us home. You say that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Help us to come back to the life that you know. Help us to come back to where we belong. We have compromised Jehovah Father. Oh God, you have compromised our faith. We have compromised our marriages. You have compromised your Father. Oh God, our relationship with you. But this morning, because you are God who is full of mercy, and your grace is new every morning, and your mercy is to your Father, oh God and our Master, we come back to you. Bring us back on track. Bring us back to the fold where we belong. You walked with Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You can also walk with us to your father. Therefore, this morning, it is our humble cry that come and do that only you can do and you will do. We love you and we honor you because you know heaven is not complete without us. 
Heaven is not whole without us. We need you, dear Father. Separate us, dear Father, for the life that you are living and bring us back on track. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.